This is Julie Pearson, Little Thunder. Today is June 1st, uh, 2018. <laughs> Thank you, George. I uh, work for the Oklahoma Oral History Research Program at Oklahoma State University, and I'm honored to interview um, President George Miguel of the Chilaco Alumni Association. You'll be president until next year. Um, he's the Chilaco class of 1960. Tohono Odom, and also a um, veteran, a serviceman who has been in the military. And I'll be asking you about your experiences at Shilako and also in the military and a bit of what you've done since then. Mm -hmm. um, where were you born and where did you grow up? I was born in Sells, Arizona, and I grew up there uh, up until the, I was probably 14 years old when I came to Shilako. And the reason why I came, well, mostly uh, because we didn't have high schools on our reservation at the time. Everybody went up through the eighth grade at home, but then to go beyond the eighth grade, you had to go off to boarding school. Mm -hmm. And I chose Shilako because uh, my grandfather actually went to school here uh, way back in 1905, I think it's when, they, when he arrived here. Not voluntarily, there he was like, uh, Hand, uh, hog tied and thrown in the back of a wagon and shipped up here. Oh so he spent the rest of his life here at Chilaco. Uh, he, he went to school here, then he went to the service from here. He was in the army, mm -hmm. came back, and he just worked here. And he married his worked teacher. Worked on, on the campus. On campus here, yeah, and, and he married his teacher. <laughs> That's quite a story. Yeah, and right now they're both buried right here in Ark City, right next to each other at the cemetery. And, I go visit there every chance I get. Right, yeah. right. And uh, <clears throat> now, but, did you come? Did, were there any other people? Um, oh yes. That you and, came with from when you came in? Uh, oh no, I came by myself. But okay. and the reason why I came, I, in fact, I came in the middle of the year. I tried public school back home, but I I just didn't like it, and mm -hmm. uh, so my mom asked me if I wanted to come to school here and stay with my grandfather because it was the middle of the year. Okay. And so I didn't do my paperwork or anything. And, he, and she said, just go up to Oklahoma and stay with your grandfather and go to school and then maybe next year you can get into Schlocko because I've always wanted to, to be uh, come to school at Schlocko because my, my oldest brother, one of my older brothers came here also. He's a okay. half-brother, same father, I mean same mother, different father. But anyway, he went to school here too, and uh, and uh, this was during the Korean conflict. So he was here, and, and uh, he went to Korea from from here. Mm. <clears throat> but anyway, uh, so I, uh, I we did not know how to go contact my grandfather, but my mom said, "Well, he's there. It's supposed to be at Chilaco. <laughs> so they just shipped me up here. I mean, I just came up here on the bus, uh, on the bus, Greyhound bus, uh -huh. and uh, it was." Quite an experience because I got off at uh, Ark City at two o'clock in the morning, and the uh, bus depot was closed. Of course, and this is in the wintertime. This is in January, yeah. and it was snow outside and cold. And I just simply got off the bus, and I had a little one a little bag, you know, had that had a few clothes in there. And so I just simply got off the bus, and the bus took off with my luggage. With your luggage. And uh, oh. so, <clears throat> and, but my brother had told me that. Uh, you know, you can, a lot, of, a lot of students hitchhike. At that time, we, everybody used to hitchhike, get right, around. Right, So you can just sit, you can uh, uh, probably just catch a ride from uh, Arc, uh, Arc City to, to the campus. Mm -hmm. But this was like 2 o'clock in the morning, so I started walking. I said, no, oh, better not I'll preach to death somewhere. So uh, luckily, as, as I was heading down south to head towards campus, uh, I saw a little light there. And uh, it was just a small building, probably about 12 by 12. And it had a little, little light up there, it was actually a little taxi stand. And uh, so I walked uh, over there and I asked them if I could uh, stay in there till, uh, till morning, then I'll start hitchhiking. Mm -hmm. And they had a bench there, I said, yeah, go ahead, sit down. He was nice, and nice enough to let me stay there, and I just sit there and went to sleep sitting on the bench. But I didn't know that they could they could have brought me. You know, I had some money to be able to you know pay for the cab fare out to the campus, but I didn't know that because it's crossing the state line. So I just figured oh. they wouldn't be able to cross the state line, you know. So I just didn't say anything. Mm 
Bless your heart. And then so the next morning, uh, when the sun started coming up, I got on the road and the, the, uh, I uh, caught a ride right away. I think it was the second car. And this guy was a salesman, so he was. We were talking, and we missed the turn off. We missed the arch, and we ended up in Newkirk. And he says, "I think we missed it." He said, "But I'll take you back." So we turned around. He brought me back, and finally we saw the arch. So he dropped me off and thanked him, and started walking just a little ways. And one of the it woke. Uh, he, it turns out to be he was going to be one of our instructors, because I was in agriculture, and he's one of the agriculture instructors. He picked me up on the on the road from the. As you arch. came in through the arch. Oh uh, yeah, and so he brought me over and brought you know he asked me where I wanted to go. And I said, well I don't know. So I'm looking for my grandfather, but nobody seemed to know. So he took me to home six, and uh, so the advisor there said, uh, well what do you want to do? And he said you want to go to school here? And I said yeah, that was my first choice anyway. So I said okay, we'll sign you up, and then, so they registered me, and then I've been here ever since. Now did you? Connect with your grandfather because yeah, he was so on campus. Yeah, eventually, right? after I got settled in, and then they gave me some clothes, you know, hand towels <laughs> to wear it until they, you know, my finally, about two weeks later, they finally found my luggage and it was brought back here, oh, shipped back here. <laughs> so, anyway, uh, and about that time, about two weeks later, I finally found out where my grandfather was. And uh, he lived, by that time, he had retired and moved, moved to Ark City. I see. And, uh, so one weekend I went and knocking on his door and found out who he was and so he brought me back to campus and then he used to come out. He and must have been me. so surprised. Yeah, and, and happy. Uh, yeah, he'd take me. We'd go to the basketball games here together and then Sundays we'd just go for a drive uh -huh. out and and just talk, you know. But but I was I always wanted to know about his history and, and one of these days I might. In fact, I'm trying to do research to find out as much as I can about him and how mm -hmm. his travels, how he ended up here. Mm -hmm. But I didn't, at the time, I didn't really want to ask him personally because uh, he had probably a lot of hurt, you mm -hmm. know, so I didn't mm -hmm. want to go there. Yeah. <clears throat> so I, uh, I just let him talk. And, mm -hmm. But he had a little farm right there on the state line. He bought mm -hmm. a little, I think, a four-acre plot or something like yeah. that. And, but he used to have a milk house. So I, Sometimes I'd go work for him over there, you know, cleaning the barn and helping milk the cows and stuff. <laughs> and uh, so it was enjoyable when I was when I was here. And uh, then when I left, uh, I didn't uh, see him again. But fine. But my my mom always told him to come back home, you mm -hmm. know, back to Arizona. Mm -hmm. That he still had family there, but he said he felt like he didn't he didn't have anybody back home. And, mm -hmm. That's why he stayed here, you mm -hmm, know. Mm -hmm. And he forgot to speak the language, and yet, mm -hmm. I'm sure when he came here, he didn't speak English at all, you know. Right, right. But and now he forgot the author language, and mm -hmm. so he just remembered a few words that we, like I said, we'd go out and park, and he'd try to say a few words, but mm -hmm. sometimes he'll he'll mess it up because just you change change the tone just a little bit, it changes the word, you know. Yeah, right. <clears throat> so, but anyway. It was a good experience. So they did, they welcomed you, they got you into classes. Mm -hmm. um, what were some of your favorite classes? Uh, I guess math, uh, because I was, in, I was in the agriculture, well actually the agriculture program was good because I'm, I like to work with my hands and uh, mm -hmm. I stayed here every summer and worked. Uh, oh you did? Every, was that program already available? Yeah. Like the year round? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Okay. So we stayed here and uh, so what would it Happen is that if you're in the agriculture club, you get a, a project calf to mm -hmm. fat out for a show, and uh, so and if you stay and work the summer, you'll get an extra calf. So oh. uh, in the fall, I'd get two calves and then raise them, and you you get to keep the, all the proceeds from the so when you sell them. Right. And plus, we did a lot of harvesting and whatever we harvested, we sold half of it to go to school, half would go to the, the the program. And then we get, the students get uh, some part of that money too, the harvest mm -hmm. money. But we didn't get it. We, we had a little bank account. We used to have a little bank here on yeah. campus. And so they just put it in savings for us. And mm -hmm. uh, if you ever needed money, you had to go through your storm advisor and you know, tell them what your needs are. And then if he approves it, then 
you go to the little bank and draw it out and then go to Arc City and do your shopping. <laughs> oh. <laughs> so wow, that's, that's, that was the great part of it. I mean, well, yeah. so I always had money, but I always stayed until the last two weeks before school started. Then I'd go back home. I was wondering, so yeah. you'd go home for two weeks? Yeah, for two weeks and visit and then... And you come. could pay for your own bus yeah. ticket at that yeah. point. Yeah. That was so. That was what was great about us. Yeah. A little, little more independent. I could, you know. Was it out. hard to when you just went home for two weeks? Was it hard to go back to Schlock? Uh, not really, because by that, well, what was hard was when I first came, mm -hmm. because back home we have mountains, and you know, you get you're used to. That's how you tell your directions. Mostly. Yeah. And uh, but when I got here, it's all flat, and mm -hmm. I, I I really got disoriented. Um, the sun was coming in the wrong place for me, in my mind, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. and it actually kind of made me sick there for a little bit, about mm -hmm. two weeks, because the, it was a weird feeling because the sun was coming up in the wrong place. Mm -hmm, and uh, mm -hmm. but after about two weeks, I finally got to know where east is east and west is west, and so I finally got adjusted to mm -hmm. uh, the plains, you know. But I missed the mountains, and that was probably the hardest part. Was but once I got situated, it was home, you know. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I really liked it here, you know, and especially meeting all the people and got a lot of my friends. I'd go home with them for holidays, you know. And Christmas, I spent with one of my friends in Tulsa one Christmas, and so I got oh, to go. That's nice. Places. You got invited by your friends to, for different yeah, holidays. Yeah, and uh, I go to the powwows and mm -hmm. you know just different experiences for me. You right. Know, and right. so I, it was just home to me. I just. My other home and my family to this day they joked to me about this being my second home because <laughs> so I came back I, I got the active in the uh, alumni association I think it was uh, 2006 I believe it was when I first oh. I attended my first uh, reunion in Albuquerque oh, wow. when we, that's when we had it in Albuquerque and I decided to participate and. Mm -hmm. Lo and behold, I got uh, elected to the board, and then I've been with the board ever since, and come four times a year, and right. never missed a meeting. Yeah, it's a great yeah. way to come back. And, and so then everybody wanted me to become president. I kind of didn't want to, that's it. Uh, but uh, we got a good team, so I, the things that I can't handle here, mm -hmm. Dr. Baker and the other team members can do, like all this. Uh, on the job planning like for yes. every year and so I'm not a able to attend all those meetings but we we keep in touch email and phone and all that all right. so I'm still the president. <laughs> <laughs> well um, so going back to Shalako a little bit what were some of the details that you got that you remember stand out? Uh, I, I what I really liked was uh, uh, to hear the other languages you know Okay. And uh, and uh, what really amazed me was. Uh, and you were fluent because you had grown yeah, up. Yeah, yeah. I, I, that I was, was your born, first language. I was born. Uh, also was my first language. And right. English is the second language. So, so, uh, so I, I was fluent. I mean, I was fluent. I'm still fluent. And uh, but I came here and I like, I used to like to listen to some of the others talk their language. You know. Did you learn some other? Oh yeah, you always vocabulary. You always learn, yeah. yeah. <laughs> It's, you always learn the yeah, bad words that, first. Yes, right. <laughs> yeah. yeah, and uh, and uh, this what really amazed me was this. Uh, his name was uh, Williams. So anyway, his last name is Williams, and this other classmate of mine, in fact, uh, uh, John. Oh, what was in their Cherokee? They're both Cherokee, and I used to listen to him talk about this uh, Williams. Uh, person he didn't look like he I mean he didn't look mm -hmm. he didn't look native mm -hmm. you know mm -hmm. but boy he sure could speak that turkey <laughs> <laughs> and I used to just like to hear them talk you know uh -huh. and uh, so that was one of the great things I, I liked about here and the different cultures you know that you know right and uh, it was just it just to me um, you know sometimes you hear a lot out of uh, negative negativity about boarding schools but to me it was seemed like to me it was all positive but I I do presentations back home in fact uh, I got uh, alumni of the year because I used to uh, do motivational talks to the young the young people mm -hmm. and uh, 
So I got uh, the Native American uh, uh, Alumni of the Year for Arizona State University in 2012 oh, hey. because of my involvement with trying to get young uh, uh, students to uh, get them motivated to either go to college or uh, mm -hmm. uh, enhance their career. Mm -hmm. So, and I, I always uh, uh, talk about, you know, uh, well, I, I do uh, I do a presentation on Chilaco, in fact. In fact, I have it on okay. on uh, flash drive. In okay. fact, maybe one of these I'll share it with you. That'd be great. <coughs> and uh, and uh, so, and for some reason, my presentation is really kind of uh, uh, leaning towards the military side. I mean, there's a lot of mm -hmm. the stuff that I present is about the military, and mm -hmm. I, uh, uh, but anyway, uh, I, uh, I, 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 I tell when I start my presentation, I always start out with the, you know, you you read a lot about boarding schools, the the, the bad parts, and the, and uh, I said, and I'm not trying to whitewash my presentation. It's just what I went through and it's my yeah, experience and it's not uh, it wasn't that bad I mean it wasn't what I mean to me I didn't really have any bad experience I just mm -hmm. seemed like it was all positive maybe it was because of me you know having to having a positive attitude maybe I don't know but well, uh, who were some of the teachers that you remember uh, Mr. W well, Mr. Quiring was the action in our teacher, but he was the dorm supervisor. But the teachers, I think, was uh, Mr. Hathcote, because some of the, the teachers that we had there were actually alumni also. They, they finished yes. here and they uh, went and got their degrees and came back and taught here. But uh, And, uh, oh, kind of getting back to the agriculture, we didn't really, we weren't really required to do a lot of math, you know. Mm -hmm. uh, so, but I knew I had always wanted to go on to college, and mm -hmm. it was we always from the back of my mind. And uh, so I used to do extra extra work. I took algebra, and chemistry, and oh, okay. uh, uh, to you know put myself in a better position. You kind of position. got on the academic track, right? Yeah, and uh, so uh, uh, and the chemistry teacher was uh, he impressed me pretty much. Uh, in fact, he was ex military man. Um, he was a captain in the the army, and he was he was one that really kind of impressed me. I mean, kind of mm -hmm. liked liked his style, his teaching. Mm -hmm. So, and in fact, I got the chemistry student uh, award for that year. You know. Oh, that's neat. Yeah. So yeah. I I like I, I guess that's what I'd like to do. Uh, I always wanted to do uh, you know go a little harder. Go on to higher. Education. Yeah, yeah, instead of just coasting along, I'd mm -hmm. rather meet some new challenges, you know. Mm -hmm. So, so, um, so did you, you knew the National Guard was yeah. there, mm -hmm. and did you get involved? Right, yeah, and that's when I, I signed up, and uh, I, I, ever since I was small, uh, I was always gung-ho, I just liked the military, just uh, the snap too, and, you know, being sharp, you know. <clears throat> In fact, one of the... Uh, uh, BIA uh, education uh, specialist back home. He even talked to me about uh, you know keep it up and maybe one of these days you'll make it to West Point. You know, and right always, where they really emphasize grades and academics. Yeah, yeah. and uh, so I really thought about you know strive for that. You know, and, I, and uh, but I didn't really uh, get a chance. I, I was probably more focused on uh, college at the time. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. But I think uh, yeah. if I had to do it over again, I think I probably would have just went straight military and mm. be a career. Uh, mm -hmm. uh, so, so I spent most of the rest of my time in reserves. Uh, they put me because the back home we didn't have a uh, guard unit close by. Right. So they just put you on the standby, and so. Uh, so you enlisted after you got back yeah. home. Yeah. Okay. Uh, no, no. I listed here. Enlisted here. Okay. Yeah, and I went to uh, I went to basic training in Fort Leonard Wood, uh, Missouri. In fact, Jim and I, uh, all of us, went to Fort Leonard Wood. Oh, you were in basic training with yep. Jim Baker. Okay. Yeah, and then after that, I went to AIT training in uh, uh, Fort Jackson, South Carolina. Mm-hmm. <clears throat> and uh, 
But me and a friend of mine, we wanted to go try out for the boxing team. So we made it. Uh, his name was, he was my best buddy. His name was uh, Turner Silman. Uh -huh. Everybody called him Hoss because he was a, he was a Hoss. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, uh, we tried out for the boxing team. We made it. So we were, I just spent the so rest of the So you were on the time. Army boxing team? Yeah, on the regimental boxing team in Fort Jackson. So. And had you boxed at Shalako a little too? No. I, okay. You know, you had, yeah, because they didn't have it at that time. They know. had cut the program already. Yeah. But, uh -huh. uh, but my buddy, he used to, I shouldn't maybe say this, but he used to sneak off and box for, with the Pocket City team, oh. some of the local. <laughs> to uh, stay in shape. <laughs> yeah. So anyway. What was uh, it like being, had you ever been to Fort Leonard? Have you, have you ever been in that area? Nah, you know, I came so close. But last, uh, what was it, a couple of years ago, three or four years ago, anyway, we, uh, after the every every year after the reunion, I kind of take a little vacation, you know, uh -huh. and work myself back home. So my my family came with me, and uh, we went to uh, from here. We went to uh, uh, Branson, Missouri, because I like country music too. And so my family and, uh, with, uh, and I went to Branson. We stayed there a couple of days, and then from Branson went to Haskell, oh. and toured Haskell, and then. From there, I wanted to see the Kickapoo country, so we drove up north of Topeka, uh, up to Kickapoo, land, and came back, and then came back to Wichita, and then flew back home. And, How uh, Last year, <clears throat> last year after the reunion, we went to uh, Reno, and then to um, Yellowstone National uh, uh, Park. And, Washington and you know it's like that's great. So you around. use the reunion right. as a takeoff point. Yeah, and after that, worked myself boring. home and uh, one year uh, I went took the Amtrak to uh, Dallas and San Antonio and came up that way uh -huh. to Tucson. And this year I'm going to uh, the the one that goes through the Rockies mm -hmm. to come out at Reno. But I have to go east and come back west <laughs> on the Amtrak. So oh, that'll be that's a, already planned out. <laughs> that'll be an adventure. Yeah, but that well, is, Shalaka has been good to me. So when you uh, arrived, you know, when you when you were in the reserves, then uh -huh. what kinds of skills did did you have coming coming out of Shalako that helped you? Do you think? I think the discipline. I mean, I think that's what that's what really helped. I mean, <clears throat> you know. Uh, and that's what I try kind of tell people back home. Seems like the, a lot of the, the younger generation they don't they don't uh, they don't take uh, uh, orders very well. I mean, you know, seem like they know better. I mean, they know it all. You know, you try to tell them something, and they say, "No, oh, I know, I know." And to me, I, I ever since from here, you know, we took orders. I mean, you know, he, it is just a part of part of us growing up here. It was that. We knew it had to be done, and we just do it, <laughs> you know. So, so I think that's probably the best uh, thing that I learned here was uh, discipline, and uh, you know that uh, uh, you can't be antisocial. I mean, it's, mm -hmm. it's not there. How was it helpful having Shalako, other Shalakoans in the in your unit? Yeah, and that helped too. Yeah, because we were all. We were all still brothers, <laughs> right. hanging, you know, uh, from Fort Leonard where we kind of split up. I think but, uh, Dr. Baker went to Fort Dix, New Jersey, and uh, me and some of others went down to uh, South Carolina. Mm -hmm. But you but, got to box, basically, right. the rest of that time that you served. Right, right. right. What was your most uh, memorable match, I guess? Uh, I was. We were talking with the ladies last night about the... Uh, uh, when you pe meet people, they don't know who you, that you're native, you know, mm -hmm. and <clears throat> so they were sharing their stories, and uh, so I told them about the time that I was in Fort, uh, Fort Jackson, and I was just working, you know, uh, working out, and this uh, young kid came up to me, and he says, uh, how are things in the old country? And I said, and I knew what he meant, you know, he, he thought I was Asian, you know, and, uh, or something, mm -hmm. and so I told him, well, I guess Arizona is just about as old as any other place. <laughs> <laughs> so I guess that's the Your whole country. Your people have been around a long, <laughs> yeah. a long time. 
So we were laughing about that, it, that people, you know, you can't really yes. judge a book by its cover, sure. you know. You, right. You have to not to know who's inside. <laughs> <laughs> but well, that was one of the, the great, great things. And <clears throat> one thing that kind of I didn't feel really comfortable was that uh, the discrimination in the South, you know, at mm. that time. So yes. You yes. know, you, were, you weren't allowed to go, you know, if you were not, if you were non-white, you were... Not the Jim Crow places. stuff that was mm -hmm. going on. Wow, yeah. So that's that was the big uh, hurt for me, was not being... Yeah. Uh, in fact, I, I even experienced it in Fort Leonard Wood, you know. <clears throat> uh, after we left, uh, they let us go at midnight, uh, and I, I, I forgot my paperwork at, at my uh, barracks. So I had to leave the group and I had to catch a cab back to my uh, company area and pick up my paperwork. By the time I got to uh, to town, everybody was gone, you know. And so I tried to go into the restaurant and they, they said, I'm sorry. Yeah, I had my uniform on. And they said, I'm sorry, we can't serve you. And I said, God, you know, here I am in American uniform and American soldier and uh, they won't serve me. And this is 1961. Uh, One. Yeah, 61 about, yeah. Yep. But that was, that's the only neg negative mm -hmm. thing that really mm -hmm. st sticks out in my mind. You mm -hmm. know? But other than that, the travel, everything was you know, enjoyable. Got mm -hmm. to learn a lot, see a lot. Yeah, great experiences. So, so how did you get into higher education? What happened after you left the military? I, uh, you know, when I was here, it was funny. When I was here, I was trying to kept trying to get uh, uh, get into uh, Arizona State. And mm -hmm. <clears throat> they had a scholarship for their, uh, Native Arizonans, and I kept applying, kept applying, and they kept turning me down. Said, well, this is for Arizona Indians only, and I said, "But I'm I'm an Arizona Indian. I just happened to go to school in Oklahoma." So they did turn me down, and so I was actually going to go to school in Stillwater. Because uh, by the time I graduated, I had me a good little nest egg from all the work from yes. working here in the summers. And uh, so one of my uh, uh, instructors, in fact, the same guy, Art Jones is his name. Art Jones, he, he's the one that kind of took me under his wing and <clears throat> took me down to ASU. And, uh, oh, he took, took you all the way down yeah, there? Yeah, yeah, on his personal time, personal car, you know. Right. And uh, so we took the campus. and. Uh, we had one of our other uh, agriculture students, Norman Little. He was actually well, there uh, working for the the uh, college, for the university. And he's, he actually had a, a bunk out at the barn, one of the barns, because that was part of his job was to take care of the horses and stuff. So he actually had a, a like, a, like, a, like in the old days, he was a, a, right. <laughs> Had to be there. <laughs> yeah, had a buck bed in the barn, and uh, that's where he stayed. And he said, "This is probably where you'll stay." And I said, "Yeah, I don't mind. I like horses, and you know." So uh, anyway, he took me down there, and then, so I transferred all my money uh, from here down to uh, Stillwater, opened up a bank account, and I was ready to go to school there. Mm -hmm. And here on the eleventh hour, I get a get a letter from ASU said that they finally accepted me. So I just closed down my bank account and mm -hmm. threw everything in my car. And at that time, I bought me a little you had car. A car. <clears throat> then I, I went back home and started started ASU. And what was your major? Um, I, at that time, it was mechanical engineering because well, <clears throat> when I was here, I took that strong uh, a strong well, I forget what to call it, but it gives you uh, what your high end as far as your interest and your mm -hmm. your. Uh, Oh, kind of aptitude tests? Yeah, aptitude like, tests, mm -hmm. like, and I was strong in engineering and I was strong mm -hmm. in agriculture, so I was going to be an agriculture engineer, you know, that, and so I was going to go to school at the OSU, <clears throat> and so when I got home, I changed it to mechanical engineering, but then uh, I, I dropped out after three semesters, and then um, uh, I, got, I went to work in construction, and then and I really liked that, so... And that's been my, my trade ever since then. So I was <clears throat> I was actually a, a carpenter for about 30 years. And, but meanwhile, I went to work for this company in Phoenix, and they said that I had, they saw that I had some college, so they wanted to give, 
give me an opportunity to go back to school mm -hmm. and they paid for my tuition and and uh, gave me time off from work you know to go attend classes and so that's what I did. That was my second stint at ASU. So you were still studying engineering yeah. in college, right. mechanical engineering, right? That would relate to so, construction, and right? So then, uh, <clears throat> oh, oh, then uh, I, that was in '76, I believe it was, and that's when we had the economic crunch, and so I got laid off, and mm -hmm. and that's when I finally went home. I was gone from sales for 20, oh. uh, 20 years. Mm -hmm. I left in 55 and I finally moved back in 75 mm -hmm. and so uh, I just went back stayed in construction as, as a, oh, I see. As a for, construction. The, for the tribe? Did you work for the uh, tribe? Well no, no uh, just, just different con contractors. contractors but it was kind of some of it was through the tribe through our tarot, mm -hmm. tarot uh, office okay. uh, tra tribal employment rights office mm -hmm. and uh, but I worked uh, all over in Phoenix and southern Arizona and Tucson and uh, so uh, then when we opened our casinos, our tribe, they, they, they finally offered uh, scholarship money to go back to college, uh, and to go to college rather. And so I said, uh, by that time I was already in the late 50s, and I said, well, I'll, I'll, I'll try and see if I get it. If I do, I'll go back to school. So I did, and lo and behold, I got my scholarship. And so I went back to the issue, and this is my third time at the issue. And besides, and this time I, they had a construction school there too, so I just went right into uh, it's called Delhi Web School uh, of Construction, and uh, so I went through that program. So uh, by the time I was mature and you know I hit the books, and so I did I did real well. Uh, and academic, that degree, academically, uh, that degree would let you kind of be an administrator. Kind of be the supervisor, right? Supervisor yeah, capacity. manager. Yeah, construction manager. management is called. Yeah, and so uh, while I was there, I decided to uh, go ahead and go for my master's, and so I did. So I have a master's in construction management from ASU. That's really neat. So uh, I uh, that was been my trade for about thirty, what, thirty-five years or mm -hmm. more. Is construction. So uh -huh. I like I like to build. Yeah. So. What a great story. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um, well, how important is it for you to be involved with, um, first of all, let's talk just veterans activities. Are you involved with any veterans organizations? Uh, not back home, but here, uh, yeah, I really try to, you know, uh, like I said, I, I said the back, it's in my heart, but uh, I don't know, I just... Uh, I just never really, you know, got involved. But I, I, it's in, it's in me. It's in my heart. You know, yeah. I, You've I grew service. up like that, and uh, so I'd like to, but then uh, seem like you know, the my work, I, my work at home, uh, mm -hmm. my job. Mm -hmm. Plus, uh, I'm still working. I work for the tribal college back back home. I'm actually the uh, uh, department chair of uh, occupational uh, education and. One of the uh, my purposes is uh, apprenticeship mm -hmm. and GED and anything that's got to do with the workforce development, mm -hmm. and so that takes up a lot of my time. Plus, how we long have, have you had that position? I'm sorry. How long have you been department chair? Uh, probably about 14 years. Uh, I actually got it when I, right after I got my bachelor's, mm -hmm. and then so um, I took time off to go back and finish my master's, mm -hmm. and then. I, could, I could, went right back, you know, went right back to the same position. So, uh, uh, so I, I, I started in '03. That's when I got my bachelor's, and I thought I could do my uh, do my master's and work at the same time, but I, I, it was very hard. So I just took time off and and went back and finished, got my master's, and so uh, and then I then I went back to the tribal college and. Uh, so, uh, so you're do, you're doing the academic part, but then you've also got the construction work, right? So yeah. You actually, have Cause two I, jobs yeah, I have going. a car, uh, I have a contractor's license, and so I uh, I do projects too on the side, and plus mm -hmm. we have a ranch too. So we, <laughs> I, and so I I got that's why I said I'm very busy. Oh I, yeah. Uh, what do, What do you raise? Oh, uh, cattle and uh -huh. yeah, just cattle, yeah. 
And, uh, How did your Shilako agricultural experience help you with that? Oh, it just fit right in, you know, because, I mean, that's how I grew up, and then, you know, uh, coming here and just working with the horses and the cattle, it's just, just, you, know, you worked right. with the Morgan Horse Program a little bit? No, or was that, that gone? That, 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 we didn't, I guess we didn't have that there, we just, but we did, we had gone. cattle, you know, yeah. we had cattle here and the horses, and when, we break our own horses here at Chilaco, and that was a good experience. <laughs> Do you have any memories of breaking? Yeah, them? in fact, uh, it was. I think it was my senior year. Yeah, it was my senior, year. and uh, so I, I got my horse and and I, I pulled it too much and I, and I, I, I no this way, and it fell and it fell right on my foot and uh, twisted my ankle, and that was my graduation. Supposed to be my graduation and. So I had, I was limping around in, in on crutches <laughs> for the last two weeks or you know, and uh, they told me I, I could didn't really have to walk, you know. And of course, just, yeah. <laughs> but I, I got my I gra I graduated I got my diploma <laughs> in a roundabout way. <laughs> yeah. It's a funny story. How about um, how uh, why are the Shilako reunions important to you? Uh, it's just reliving, I guess, reliving uh, the friendship and the, uh, <clears throat> the yeah, I mean, mostly it gets to me is re reliving the friendship and, and it is, you know, it takes a lot of, take a lot of work, you know, when I sit here and do all the stuff that we, we accomplish and we need to do and get it done, make sure everything comes out okay, you know, it takes a lot of planning and a lot of meeting and a lot of mm -hmm. dedication and, uh, you know, none of us get paid, you know, mm -hmm. we're all volunteer, mm -hmm. and especially for somebody like me, I fly in, you know, four times a year, and it's it's about money, but I, it's, to me, it's uh, like uh, giving back to the community, you know, mm -hmm. been good to me, so time for me to give back, mm -hmm. and so I, 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 I like it, and uh, hopefully we're trying to get our younger membership to step up and mm -hmm. take over the lead because it seemed like most of us are my age, you know, mm -hmm. me and Dr. Baker, we were in the, we were classmates, you know, and, right. and a lot of the the board members now are, you know, pretty up in their years and mm -hmm. like to hopefully get some of these newer, younger members interested and take over. Mm -hmm. But to me, yeah, it's the friendship, the uh, the uh, stories, the uh, kinship. I mean, to me, I mean, and it is really too. You you hear it a lot that uh, you know, it's like brothers and sisters. You know, mm -hmm. and I think uh, that's exactly how I feel. You know, mm -hmm. it's 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 great. You know. And you really hadn't been involved with the Southwest chapter before 2006, huh? Was, uh, was it no, when before went? then, no. Oh, you know. Yeah, it was when yeah. you went to the Albuquerque meeting of yeah. Shilako. Yeah, that's when I got that involved, got involved and then I've been involved with <laughs> in it. Yeah, in fact, at one time I was actually the president of the Southwest chapter. Well, just before I got elected to this, I, okay. was, I was president of the Southwest chapter and then when I got to, elected to the national uh, I had I gave that up, you know, right. and so I could I could devote my time over here. <laughs> yeah. Well, I know everybody's glad that you have this position. Is there anything that you would like to mention that we didn't talk about, or? Uh, well, no, but I I I think I just want to kind of go back to my my grandfather. I think it's how it all started. I don't know. We would have known about Shilako if it wasn't for my grandfather, you know, uh, mm -hmm. his ties and then uh, So <clears throat> all along, my family knew about Shilako. I mean, mm -hmm. through him and, um, uh, you know, uh, like I said, I'm, I'm, I, every time I, I meet people, I try to tell them, send me anything you can on him. His name was uh, Jose Anton. Mm -hmm. And because uh, I like to keep, uh, Gather as much information as I can, and you know, write a book about him. Right. You yeah, know, his and, experience was. Uh, and yeah. were there a lot of Odom that actually got sent to Shilako, uh, or did it seem to not be different directions? Yeah, the, not really a lot. Uh, mm -hmm. When I was here, there was about six of us, I think, okay. and it dwindled down to about 
three when I grad when I graduated. There was three of us and not too many, but it just like in the seventy mid mid seventies, they uh, they must have sent a bunch because there was probably more at that time than any other time. Probably I think they had because I've talked to some of the member uh, members here and they were asking about different ones. Mm -hmm. And it was around 75 that they were here. And there was, I don't like them, maybe like 10 or 12 of them here, mm -hmm. awesome. Mm -hmm. And, uh, but it seemed like we never had more than four or five at, mm -hmm. the same, at one time. Right. You know, so uh, it, a lot of, most everybody went to Phoenix in his school. Right, that's so much <laughs> Phoenix, closer. Yeah. yeah, Phoenix and Sherman. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. In fact, that's what they wanted to do was to send me to Sherman, but I didn't like. I always wanted to go to Chilocco ever since <laughs> I, I could remember, you know. That's so interesting. So, uh, and find your grandfather, and you did. Yeah, yeah, and I did. Yeah. Yeah. So, it's uh, been a great experience. Yeah. Well, thank you for taking time to talk with me today, George. Thank you. Yeah, thank you.